Hi everybody, my name's Dave, thanks for joining me. I'd just like to ask you, if you wouldn't mind, just please like and subscribe. If you want to join me on Patreon, feel free to do so. If you want to buy me a cup of coffee, you can also do that. And if not, thank you very much for watching and I appreciate your time. Today I'm going to do about the shift on the fly system. Now, I know that not all jackaroos have the shift on the fly system. Some still have the levers and things like that. But if you do have it, it can be quite confusing. I thought I'd run through it, how it works, and any fault finding you might need to do on it if you can't get it to work. First of all, though, I have a bit of a disclaimer. Although I've modified the text extensively, this is not my work. Most of the photographs bar one are not mine, and there's no copyright information on them. If they are yours, and you recognise the text from here, please let me know, and I'll put you in there and give you credit for the writing, etc., etc. Okay. So where do we go? Some Jackaroo Supers have shift on the fly system to engage the four-wheel drive. Some do not. I'm looking at the screen again. Mine does, so I thought I'd explain how it works. What it actually does and any issues you may have. Now, my son has a 1999 Jackaroo. His has a lever. He can select high and low ratio on four-wheel drive, where my lever selects high and low ratio. I have a button on my dashboard which identifies whether I've got shift on the fly or not. Now, this doesn't take into account talk on demand or automatic locking hubs, etc., etc., but I will talk about them as we go through. So let's have a quick rundown of the system, explain how it works, what it does. So how do you know if you have shift on the fly? Well, a quick look at the front axle, and if you have this, then you've likely got shift on the fly. It will be located on the passenger side of the front differential, on the front axle, down towards the wheel hub end. If you're not sure what you're looking at, you don't see it. Another clue is a push button engaged four wheel drive on the dashboard. There's a picture of it here. Most of the systems have it a lever to engage four wheel drive. So here's the scenario. You're driving along, you see a large bank of snow in front of you on the road. No problem. You think to yourself, I have a four wheel drive, I can use that to get through it. Now, obviously, this is like, unlikely to be in Australia. However, it could be a bank of mud, it could be sand, it could be anything. As you slow down and approach and push the four-wheel drive button, you glance down at the dash and the green four-wheel drive light starts to flash. Unfortunately, it keeps flashing. You realise it isn't working and hasn't engaged. What could have caused that to happen, you wonder? So you press the button again to disengage it and the light goes out and you negotiate the snow on the sand anyway because Jackaroo Trooper is a four-bindaboo beast anyway, even in two-wheel drive. So you get home, you're in a nice warm garage, and you start to look at the system, and then you realise you're out of your depth. That is where this tutorial will come in, and hopefully you'll fix your pride and joy. So, how does it all work? It all starts with that innocuous button on the dash mat four-wheel drive. You push that button, and the axle icon on the dash starts to flash. Simultaneously, the ECU sends a signal to the actuator on the back of the transfer case to let it know to allow the front drive shaft to engage. The switch on the transfer box is tripped and it lets the ECU know that the front drive shaft has been engaged. The ECU sends signals to two VSVs on the front axle to change the flow of the vacuum. The VSV is a vacuum solenoid valve. The vacuum from the actuator causes the fork attached to the gear wheel that joins the two halves of the drive shaft together to move the gear wheel into place and join the two halves together and lock the drive shaft. I'll show you a picture of that. But anyway, that's what it does. If you look at the two pictures I've got on the screen, the right-hand one is the two gear wheels. One, they're independent of each other. The drive shaft in the middle is separate. So what that gear wheel does, it joins them together, makes the drive shaft into one, allowing it to run. The gear wheel then reports back by another switch that is in the correct place. The ECU now switches the flashing light to solid green. And then for any of this to work, you must have manual locking hubs set to lock and not set to free. Auto locking hubs will automatically lock when four wheel drive is set. So if it fails, what do you do? The first check, the manual locking hubs, are they actually locked? This is an easy thing to forget, but if you don't set them, you'll have no drive to the front wheels. All of the transmission and the drive shafts will be turning and you may have a solid green four wheel drive light and yet the wheels will not drive. Classic locking hubs. 
If the locking hubs are engaged, lift the car off the ground, support it with axle stands, engage the drive and see if all four wheels turn. If the front wheel, left wheel fails to turn, then your shift on the fly is not engaged and you likely have, will have a flashing four wheel drive icon. If both, now you can't hold onto the wheels because if you hold the front right wheel in this case, it will stop because it's an open differential. If both front wheels are not driving, then likely it's the transfer box, box that's not engaged. Check the front drive shaft to see if it's turning. Again, it's likely that the four wheel drive lamp will be flashing. You have now diagnosed where the fault is likely to be and would suspect it's more likely to be the first two descriptions that apply here. If the locking hubs are not set, then lock them and try again. That should solve the problem dead easy, but if it appears to be the shift on the fly system, you may have to check further. First, you could try the two electrical connectors which tend to get really dirty. Give them a good clean with electrical contact cleaner. They do get quite dirty and can lose connection. Once they're clean, reconnect them and apply a drive switch. They should click. If not, this may be your issue. Next, check the VSV vacuum lines for splits or leaks. You can replace any suspect hoses using a different colour, if possible, so you know that it has been changed. Hoses can dry and split over time, causing leaks. The way in which these valves work is by switching direction of the vacuum. So it, with one solenoid it pulls this way and with the other solenoid it pulls that way. In two wheel drive the vacuum keeps the arm um, from engaging the gear to the drive shaft. When the four wheel drive is selected the other switch is actuated and it alters the direction of the vacuum causing the arm to move the gear to engage the drive shaft. If you get an assistant to press the button on and off for you you should be able to hear the solenoid switching and the gear being moved backwards and forwards inside of the shift on the fly unit. If you cannot hear this gear moving, then the gear may be seized or stuck. This will require some disassembly to rectify this issue. Note, there is a breather on top of the shift on the fly unit. If the breather has allowed water to enter the unit, then the gear may be rusted, as it happened on my son's Rodeo. Remove the fork and diaphragm assembly four bolts, uh, as shown in the picture, and drain the oil from the shift on the fly unit. Once this has been removed, you can check its operation. If the arm moves okay, then it's likely the gear wheel inside is stuck. Check for rust and other debris and thoroughly clean the shift on the fly body out. Check the operation of the gear wheel and check for any damage that may have occurred. Because it could be that the gear wheel is not engaging uh, over the shaft. Once the gear wheel is moving freely or has been replaced, reassemble the unit using a new gasket and or RTV to seal up the plate. Fill with the correct oil, 80W90 gear oil is what you need to put in it. And once assembled, the shift on the fly unit should operate correctly. The shift on the fly system oil should be checked routinely at 15,000 kilometers. This concludes the checking of the shift on the fly system for the minor issues. If it still doesn't work, you're going to have to go in deeper. You'll have to send me a message or leave me a comment and then I'll have a look at it for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.